Okay, so Justin. Yes. It's lovely to have you in, man. Thank friend. you for having me. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for over though. Um, so, just first of all, for for the listeners, just tell us who you are and why the hell I'd want you to. Uh... So, my name is, is Justin in Grey from um, from Nottingham, and I'm a property investor, and I've come from. I would say it's a um, maybe a similar background to you, mm. and I'm I'm doing things which are probably out of the norm for where we come from, which is the reason why I feel like you would want me on here. Overcome yeah. adversity, overcome issues, overcome problems, overcome challenges, and now sort of making something out of life that is not expected from where we come from. So yeah. that's probably the reason I'd say you want me on here. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You know what? I'll back that up with yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Um your your I love your story of like yeah. just from what I know of you. You know, I know yeah. we've not known each other massively that long. Yep. Uh, it's got a bit more central. Yep, no worries. Um but yeah so so yeah uh, you've done a lot in the property stuff I and I love what you do already yeah, what, what you, you. you know where you're at and where you're going because yeah. I know your direction as well it's good to know yeah the ins and outs um so yeah obviously the, the the thing we do on the show every single time is the gift yeah I've been looking out <laughs> at the camera I can't see it parked anywhere but so just yeah surprise what it is you want the gift yeah <laughs> let's go so the reason I'm giving this gift, so I've, I've, I've looked really at the other gifts that people, I've, I've looked at the other gifts what people have gave you, and uh, some of them are funner, and it made me think, shit, maybe I should have done something funner. Uh, so this gift, it's a, it's a silver, solid silver coin, and I think it represents me and what I do, which I is get. invest. I'm an investor, but it okay. also, it's what I encourage other people to do, which is invest. And a silver coin is a very good place to start. I feel like a lot of people should be buying this type of. Um, asset, it's God's currency. Um, it beats inflation. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there's your gift. Have solid you, silver have you coin. Bought this for me specifically. Or just I your, have. No, I purchased oh. it for you, so you specifically. You've still got one. I, I've got quite a few. Yeah. Not. Love it. To be fair, I got the idea from a mentor of mine. So every time we purchased a house or sold a house, he used to always reward us with uh, a silver coin or a gold coin. Yeah. And who's that on the back? I know that that's a famous symbol, isn't it? I'm Zeus. Not, yeah, I'm not very good at that. No, so no, it's not Zeus. Zeus. I think. It, does it say, so it's Britannia. I don't know what Britannia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know there's like meanings behind. Yeah, yeah, there is. There. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. meaning behind that one, but yeah, um, love it. Love yeah, it. yeah. Well, nice I'll, I'll treasure it and I'll stick it on the wall. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully it will give me give me some good luck. With yeah, it. yeah. And if you ever are short for cash, you can trade it in and get some, <laughs> get some cash for it. What, what will be worth? Uh, I think they're worth around fifty, maybe sixty pounds for them really? them coins. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The good coins, and you can actually buy like the big bars. And I like gold and silver. Um, I, you know what? I didn't know it was worth that much. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I like gold and silver. I think um, they're very good assets to have, and you actually can put them on your balance sheet in your business. So yes. they are yeah, actually I've classed before, as, yeah. as, as an investment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Love it. There you go. Appreciate it, my man. No worries, bro. I, I'll be honest. I didn't realise it was worth that much. So. <laughs> I hope it is now. Now I've said that. <laughs> yeah, well, probably like five minutes. And you're like, you that coin I got for week. <laughs> so. Let's let's dig into yeah. you know, like your your life and everything. So, you where did you grow up? And, and where, where were you? I a, grew as, up as baby Justin. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in in Nottingham. Um, Mum and dad both married. Um, council estate. Both had pretty normal jobs. Oh. Um, they didn't come through like a massive amount of wealth. Mum left when I was around four years old, and then it was just me, my dad, and my sister. Um, and yeah, he, my dad brought us up through, through the teenage years, really, through life. It was a massive struggle for him, um, being a, a 21, 22 year old man, bringing oh. up two children. And it's probably only when I've got to this age that I've realized like how yeah. fucking hard it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 And, and it yeah. must've been a struggle, man, but like I'm 31 now and I, and I would struggle bringing up two kids on my own. So yeah. at the age of 21, 22, it must've been hard. So. When, when I've got a bit older and I've looked back at like, what he actually done, I can see a lot of reasoning behind a lot of yeah. the way he brought us up. But at the at the time, obviously, I, I didn't really understand too much. But Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mad, isn't it, though? And, and, and obviously, again, we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? But you know, you're reflecting them periods. Yeah. I know years ago, it was more of the norm to have children younger. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, at 21, people got married and had kids, didn't they? That, that was quite normal years ago. I think even 18, they were yeah, yeah, doing yeah. it, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, but 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 like I know what you're saying though. Like to think that our age to have had that and be done, it's crazy, man. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was normal. Eighteen. I think my mum actually had my sister when she was eighteen, and then I was mm. twenty. Um, but like that was normal then. But now when I look back, I'm thinking when I was eighteen, when I was nineteen, twenty, 
I, I was never in that mindset. I don't yeah. know whether that's just our generation. I don't know whether it's because yeah. we've evolved into something different. I'm not too sure, but it's not the norm no more. And I still yeah. haven't got kids now at the age of 31. And even then, I think I would maybe potentially struggle a little bit. Yeah. Well, rest with your socks on, though, in the morning. Is it? <laughs> you, you just chase your own ass. Come on, you've not been socks on yet. Change your boxes just then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, when, like, yeah, so when you was that age, your mum left, what, yeah. what, what do you remember at that sort of point? Um, so I can actually, that's probably the earliest memory I have. Um, when I was four, me, my dad and my sister, we was um, coming back from my nonna's house that we used to visit. And then I can remember turning up to, to our house and my dad couldn't get in and the door was locked. And like me and my sister and my dad was like, what's going on? And there was a note on the door with a key. Um, I don't know what that note said, but I just yeah. know that she left my dad for another man. Um, and then from there for like the next six months, I think it was, they didn't have no communication with her whatsoever. So it went from from the age of zero to, to four, like having a, a mum and dad there. And then mm -hmm. from like four to maybe five, I would say, maybe even a little bit later, um, not having no communication with my mum, like just overnight. Um, can you remember, can you actually remember that? Yeah, 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 I really? can remember. Yeah, yeah, I can remember. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I can remember I used to, I don't know how I got my mum's phone number, um, house number back then. Um, and I used to, this was when I was four, between like four and five, I used to uh, sneak off upstairs into my dad's room. We had a, he had a telephone and my, my, my dad was downstairs and I used to call her. Yeah, yeah, and I can't oh. remember how I got her number. Um, but yeah, that's what I used to do. Yeah, yeah. That's a mad memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I used to do it away from my dad, so obviously mm. he didn't hear me doing it. Um, but yeah, from the... Um, to try and rationalise your... Or understand your feelings at that yeah. point is really hard. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking Leo's four. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. very, very clever, but yeah. it's still like to think like he doesn't under... So how do you think you felt then? If you look uh, back now, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, what yeah. was the... Sad. Yeah. Alone. Um, because my dad, uh, he's just a man's man, right? And he never shown me or my sister affection. Mm. I've never hugged... I've hugged him probably I'd say past few years, first time I ever hugged him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Never kissed us, never shown his affection, never really shown us that he loved us. Yeah. Um, but I can see why he was like that now. I think I think like the breakup and that really messed around with him mentally. Like looking back now, he definitely had like depression and stuff and he's openly said that. Um, but yeah, I feel like for me, I was, yeah, I felt alone, sad. Um, but I feel like I quickly, Within the first few few years, I quickly got over it and realised that the only person who was kind of there for me was me. So it's made me really independent for myself. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was it was tough. Um, mm. it, it was tricky. Let's be honest. At a very very young age, you learn how to become self reliant. Yeah, reliant. Yeah, and, yeah. and actually, I'm trying to think like to to manage your emotions because let's be honest. I'm I'm so big on understanding the whole you know first seven years of your life. Yeah, I I upset. I probably think about it too much, but I think about like the kids so much because of what I know I thought at that age yeah. and went through and, and stuff. And, and and that period is so important. Well, it's who you become, right? Yeah, the experiences that you go through at that age is the person that you become later yeah. on in life. And I know you can sometimes like change sometimes the way you are. Like now, I still feel the effects of like my childhood. So. I always say to Ray, like, I, I want kids and stuff one day with Ray. Well, probably within the next few years, but I just don't know how I'm going to be as a dad because of how I, my dad was with me mm. and how I am with family. Like I say to Ray all the time, she's really family orientated. And that's what I really like about her. But for me, I always say to Ray, I'm not a family man, I'm not a family guy. And I just don't feel close to like any of my own family. And I feel like that's just because maybe I felt like growing up, I didn't have them around me and I just kind of, learn to survive without needing that care yeah. and affection from family Do you members. Know, I can't help one thing to tell you, you are going to be a very, very good dad. Mm, I mean you. it, yeah, listen, yeah. right, because of who you've become, yeah. you will protect your children to make sure that they don't have that same life. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've created such a powerful life yeah. and become such a powerful person in what you do. So you, and I know for a fact, and that, because that's, a, that's that automatic thing that you do. You know, I'm very aware of that for my children. Yeah, and I feel like, like you go through them experiences and now I will know what will not be good for my children. That, that's yeah, my yeah. point. And I, yeah, because yeah. I know what I wanted then. Yeah. So I know what I should be giving them yeah. as well. Um, yeah. 
but you never know until you pop them no, out. You don't, but you know what, mate? And I, I, I can't say this enough because I'm all I am is a man that's had a child, and you're a man that hasn't. Yeah. You know that fucking second it comes yeah. out, your life changes. <laughs> Do you know I, I, mean? I really, really hope I, that I, happens. I, I, I can't, and anyone listening that knows that feeling would just be smiling. I know they yeah. will because it, 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 it is like a an insane change of life that you just don't even know what it feels like, and you do it. You know what? You know when you go, I don't know how to be a dad. You fucking will the next day. You got no choice, right? No, no, but, but yeah. honestly, and you become a dad. Yeah. There is actually chemical hormone responses that make you, you know, closer to that anyway. Yeah. But it's just oh, honestly, I, I I couldn't tell you enough. Like it's no, insane. that's good to hear, and I, I do hope that's the truth yeah. because I do sometimes worry that I will not have that relationship yeah. with my child. Now I hope yeah. I have the strongest bond with him, and they like become my best friend. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, without, in the next it, few years. Without it going too soppy, what we're talking about, but it's that it's even that thing of when watching them grow. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, you love the baby, and you've not even seen it. Yeah. And it definitely comes out like that. <laughs> Because every baby does. You know what me and Sarah always laugh? We look back at Leo going, fuck it, I'm like, Jesus. Yeah, but at the time, you think there was no, the best, know, yeah. best looking kid but ever, you know, right? You know when you're telling people, oh, look how cute the baby is, you think they're going, that's not cute. Man. Yeah, I've had the same. Yeah. Some of my friends are like, oh, look how cute he is, I'm thinking. I don't know. I don't man, know. Man. Maybe, you don't maybe, say that. Maybe you think it is. <laughs> but no, honestly, man, that, yeah, it, it, it makes my uh, hair stand up even think about shit. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. And I've, it's only been the past few years where me and my wife has like been like seriously thinking about that yeah since we've been together 13 years now we've it's we've sort of like pushed it on a little yeah. bit and be like no in the next five years we'll have kids. More, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> so quick about so you know like with your like upbringing and that so you went through that them phases like of you know let's be let's be honest you learn immensely and you learn a lot yeah massively. without realizing yeah, yeah. And it just happened because yeah, you had to yeah what did that, how did that then affect you going into like your school years and all that sort of stuff? Did... Um, probably a lot and a lot more than what probably what I thought at the time because it kind of just became normal, right? Mm. Now, I'm only, like, for example, like when you're at school and you have like plays and stuff like that. Ray's always inviting me to go and see her nephew and niece and, and stuff at the school. Mm. And I never had anyone there. My dad was at work and obviously yeah. my mum went around. So, but at the time, I must have seen all the other kids with their parents, right? And can you remember them bits? I can a little bit, yeah. I can, I can remember the talent shows and I can still remember the, the songs I performed, right? And yeah, everyone had the parents here and, and I didn't. But at the time, I, it, didn't really affect me too much, if I'm honest with you. I never, I did feel alone. I did feel like lonely, but not massively to the point where I was, where I let it affect me too much. Mm. Um, but like, that's something I've only realized recently when Ray's inviting me to like see her nephew, nieces and yeah. nephew and stuff. And it seemed like normal, right? For you to go and want to see your kids. Mm. But at the time I didn't really notice too much. Yeah. It just again, as well, because you were so young, you didn't have time to think, you just had to react. Yeah. Yeah, you like become it just, that person, yeah, 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 it just becomes normal, right? Yeah. Um, the reason I ask that is because you know when you do reflect back and think about it, you then puzzle together you, your life, don't you? Of yeah. Why you are like you are. Oh yeah, and and that's something I'm always thinking about. Mm. Like, and I'm really, I like to deep dive into like thinking, why am I thinking like this? Like, what mm. has shown up in my life previously for me to think like this? And a lot of it does come back to my childhood. So even like now, when I'm trying to progress for just better things in life. I think a lot of that will come down to me maybe trying to impress my dad like growing yeah. up because i didn't have that affection from him and we'd never had that relationship maybe i was doing things back then to try and impress him and make him feel proud of me and even now like some of the things i do i feel like a lot of it is probably down to that like trying to make something out of myself so i can so he is proud of me mm. and and, and that, that... Do you know you're doing that or is that just a reflection of so that's i don't know i'm doing that but I am always reflecting and just for that to come up means it must be there somewhere. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I feel like a lot of it is down to that. And I feel like I have made him proud. I've got the past few years, I've, I've started to build a better relationship with him. Um, and what Ray, my wife has been a massive part of that because like, I see how she is with her family. Right. So I can see mm -hmm. how, and she's really family oriented. So I can see how a normal family should be. So she sort of like pushed there me to want to. normal though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, her family are weird. <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing as normal. If, if, mate, yeah. if we're all searching for normal, we'll be looking for a long time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so 
how did your relationship go with your mum after that? So how long was it until then you started talking or? So for like the first year, a year and a half, um, that was when I was really trying to reach out to her, to my mum. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got her number. I, I don't even know how I got it. My, my sister's two years older than me and I feel like she must have got it from somewhere. Um, and I don't know where, but yeah, I used to call her for the next like year, year and a half and try and talk to her. Uh, I can even remember my dad coming upstairs once and I had to fucking quickly put the phone down because I was scared mm. he was going to say something, although I think he must have known. Um, but yeah, after there, I used to see her every two weeks. So I feel like my dad purposely like, got in touch with my mum and found a way to get in touch with her. And yeah, she used to see us every two weeks for like a night or a weekend. Um, and back then, that was exciting for me because I felt yeah. like, shit, I have actually got a mum in my life and she does actually want me. Um, so... Yeah, growing up, between like when she'd left and when I was like 18, I felt like she was there for me, she wanted me in her life mm -hmm. and stuff like this. But then when I got to an age where I realised what had actually happened and how it actually developed as a, as a kid, right, and realised that a mum's bond should never be broken by anyone. Yeah. And you should, and if, and if your family break up, it's the mum that always takes the, the kid. When I realised that when I was like 18, 19, like I started to think about it a lot. And then I was the one who was making an effort with her. And then I just got to a point where I was like, let me just see if I don't make an effort with her, what happens? Mm. So I stopped and we had spoke sinners. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she'd reached out. It, we would go six months and then she would reach out asking for something. Um, she would like say happy birthday on my birthday and stuff. And I've just my mindset has just developed so much since then that I'm like, I don't need that negativity. I don't need someone there who's half-hearted in my life because she's the one that's missing out. So yeah, I haven't spoke to her now in, in maybe five or six years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I don't, I don't miss that relationship either yeah. because I've, I've just got used to not having it. No, of course. Yeah. Obviously it, it, you know, it's sad and I've got a similar situation with my dad. Yeah. We spoke about before, but like it's, I think when you test that, what you said there, let's just see what she does. Yeah. You can't help but go with that, can you? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's hard as it, it's like, it, it, that's you. And as well, I, I always have this thing, right or wrong, I always have this thought of your parent is there to parent you, guide you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Tell you when you're right, tell you when you're yeah. wrong. And if that person isn't doing that for you, you can't be the child. And if you can't be the child, yeah. then you need to be the adult and move forward with your life yeah and I, and I think that's hard for people to do sort of like come away from that situation and see what develops and i think yeah. people are then scared to do that because if they do do that and there's potentially something there that they don't want to happen which is that person not to make an effort now if that does happen and, and they don't make an effort for example me and my mom when she didn't make an effort it made me think and it made me realize that shit all of these years i thought she was actually there for me and she wanted to see me and she wanted me in her life was like not true. And it was just yeah. me grasping onto that as a, as, a, as a child. And I feel like that's why a lot of people don't come away from people and they'll sort of cling onto that relationship, even though they may know that it's not right for them, but they'll yeah. just cling onto it because they feel like they need someone there. Yeah, no, I agree hundred percent. And it's such a tough thing to explain to someone when they're going through it, because yeah. you know, especially when, people have a family bond that's tighter than the average or, or you know, or just more than what we're used to, for yeah, example. Yeah. You know, they then think, well, that's not an option. Mm. But actually, you know, and, and I'm not telling people how to think here, but I'm questioning anybody that's in that situation that yeah. may be thinking this, question yourself if you're being your best self and if you're living by your own values. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because, because again, look at this as a, as a, as a scenario. If, you, if you've got a child and you, you say to a child, like, well, you're, you're trying to teach your children, right? That, that you that people are in your life and they're there to support you and they stay in your life. They yeah. don't come in and out of your life. But then if you're allowing that to be the not happen above you, do you know what I'm trying, trying to say? say? You're not then living by your values. Yeah, and it all filters down, right? However yeah. you are with your parents will could potentially subconsciously filter down into your yeah. children. So you're just going to want the best around you, right? Because that's yeah. what you want to give to your children. Yeah, yeah. It's powerful, isn't it? I can, you know, I want to say good on you for doing that. In yeah. Respect. At the end of the day, it's a uh, yeah, it's a tough situation. But do, do you not feel like you want to speak to him now, or how do you feel like literally? Like, are you nothing happy there anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I've actually what it is. like called her mum here, but like, out of here I call her Claire, which is a real name. Um, 
because I just don't see her as a mum. Um, I've got a better relationship with my mother-in-law, Ray's mum, who uh, has, over the years, like, I've been with my wife now since I was 18. Mm. So over the years, I've just sort of seen how a mum should be. And she's mm. always been that, that role model. And she is someone who I would want to be a grandmother to our children, right? Whereas my mum, I, I, I would never want that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but again, that's that protection of what you want to do for your future. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So in school, then, like, when you come out of school, so where did you, where, like, what happened? Like, how was school for you? Like, were you? Did you stick to school? Did you like school? <laughs> yeah, I mean, school's a funny time, right? Because I don't know, I missed school at the time. I didn't, but I was t I was a totally different person. I'll be honest, I was not nice, mm. and I feel like a lot of it has come down to my background and what happened, but. I wasn't nice to people. <laughs> yeah, no. honestly, looking back, I was I was a bit of a bully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's like, it's, I hate bullies. Mm. So even just thinking back at like how I used to be, I, I was, I mean, I wasn't like overly a bully, like just go around beating people up. I'm, I'm six foot two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm five foot six. I mean, we'll edit. <laughs> so I'm five foot six, right? And, and in school, I was even smaller. And I feel yeah. like maybe a lot of that has maybe come down to my height when I was in school, but... Yeah, I enjoyed it and stuff. I wasn't the the nicest kid, if I'm mm. honest with you. I wasn't the naughtiest either. I actually come away from with good grades. Um but I made a lot of good friends, learnt a lot of lessons in school and uh yeah, I think it was quite fun. I'd actually like to go back and, and redo it and I'll do it different. I'd be a nicer person if mm. I could go back to school. Like, it's funny, it's funny because right? obviously that's never possible, obviously. I know. But you know, if you could just redo it, like it it, it, it but you know what? It won't be fun because you, you'd know that you'd know the codes. Yeah, and and here's the thing: like, when you are in school, you have people saying to you, "Oh, enjoy it. This is the time oh, no. of your life." And you're like, "Oh, you sure. Think, I want to be yeah, 20 well, years old. Yeah. I want to work." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I would want to. I, I think I actually would want to go back. And I've actually felt like reaching out to people since school and and saying, "Look, sorry for the way I was." Like, yeah, like, I, I, yeah, I, I there was, was some dear. nice thing, not nice things that I've done to people. <laughs> um, but yeah. What sort of things? What, what do you mean? Is it like <sighs> just just play mind games and shit, or what? Do you, what? No, so just one of the one of the stories, and this is probably I, I don't even know if I should say this. It's going to make me look like a horrible person, but that's no, it. Whatever it is, I will supercharge it anyway. So. <laughs> Take it out of context. Context. Yeah, we'll, post we'll, it on we'll TikTok. Turn, we'll turn it right around and make it look cancel really, this really guy. Bad. <laughs> no, well, we got back from Orton Towers one time. We used to always go on school trips to Orton Towers, and. There was a girl stood at the at the railings, like leaning up against the railings, and there was like 50, 60 of us around because it was after school level and was leaving and stuff. Um, and she wasn't the most popular kid. And someone said to me, I dared to go over and pull her trousers down. Kegger, Kegger, yeah, Kegger, yeah, yeah. Kegger. That's what you used to oh, do in school, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'd done it to my lad mates, and that was a bit of a laugh. But now, when you look back at it, is it? Is it like that's horrible you don't do that like, imagine i'm walking down the street because someone comes up and kegs me right yeah so i, I kegged someone yeah i kegged them in front of the whole woman, school yeah, and girl, yeah. yeah she ran off crying and that's the time where i've looked back and i'm like i wish i could say sorry because that could have a massive effect oh, on God, people's yeah, lives no, and you. like that's a big regret of mine i don't really regret anything but that's probably one of them that i do yeah yeah the thing is there's two things here you're right it could have fucked her life yeah yeah but the flip side is you were a kid yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you know what? True. As well, I'm not even making this up. I wouldn't dare say the the girl's name because her name's just popped in the head as well. Yeah. I'd hate to say her name. I did it to a girl at school. Oh, really? The dinner line, yeah. And I never forget it. It was a Woodbrook. Yeah, it was, it was my secondary school. And uh, yeah, I did it in the the dinner line. And uh, yeah, she punched me. And then really, yeah. see that it's not nice, is it? Yeah. Especially, it's not, it's not good to a girl. No, it's not good to a girl. So <laughs> if you are watching this. <laughs> You know who you, you are. Like this, yeah, man. yeah, you know who you are. I'm not like that no more. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've changed. <laughs> you know what? They're, they're the things, aren't they? Like, it, it, extreme things you do as a child. I'm not saying you can't take responsibility because you are who you are. Yeah. But we, but when you are programmed a certain way as a child, it's so different to an adult. You know what I mean? We have to, we have to debug those things. Yeah, and like the person doing stuff like that is doing it for a reason themselves. Like yeah, I think yeah. I just wanted attention. I wanted yeah, to be yeah, the cool yeah, kid yeah. Uh, because I wanted, wasn't getting attention from home. Yeah. So that's when I was like acting up and playing the, the Joker and stuff. But like it has a massive effect on other people as well. So yeah. yeah. Please just let me stop you there for a second. I just want to first of all say you know thank you for following the, the podcast. It is such a um, uh, you know a massive 
response that we get off these podcasts and, and they're getting better and better. So first of all, I want to say thank you. But secondly, I want to give you something for free. Okay, I've been speaking a lot of, uh, about consistency at the moment with people and people struggle to keep that consistency. You know, they set a goal, they get frustrated, they, they don't understand sort of like the, the, the infrastructure of how it works. And then they start digging into that, start to make momentum, but then drop off and lose their consistency. And I see this so often with things. Maybe you're thinking this for yourself right now. So if you DM me on Instagram, and ask me for the consistency link, I will send it across to you. It's a fresh video that I've made last week where I take you through in depth how to really build a, a momentum of consistency for you in everything that you do. And you can really apply it to anything in the world. Anything that you attack with consistency, this, this matters and it will, it will fix anything that you're working on with that. So just quite simply go to Instagram and just drop me a message and just say, hey Dean, can, I, can you send me the consistency? Hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. So after school then, so did you know where you wanted to go? Like, did was it obvious to you? No, I I, had, I took guidance from my dad. Um, I actually left school with pretty good grades for how I was during school and knuckled down for the last two years. And I actually come out with 11 Cs. Really? Yeah, which for, for like how I was and Mate, for the school I went to. That's a brain box. Right? Yeah, that's what oh, I mean. Oh, oh, yeah. I felt like I could have been on, what's that program? Is it Mastermind? Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den, yeah, yeah, 11 yeah. Cs and like, some of my if you plan to go on there, by the way, like know the name of the show, yeah. <laughs> no, there's mastermind as well, right? Oh, exactly. clever people right, okay, go, yeah, I think right. so. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, I got 11 C's, and I actually thought I opened the wrong packet, like because it, it came in a packet. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And like some of my friends, who are still like my really good friends now, um, they was like geeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were geeks, and they didn't get as many as 11 C's, right? So I'm skip, hop, skipping, and jumping down the road, yeah. thinking, yes, I can't wait to show my dad. So I show my dad, and and he said, oh, then you get no B's. That was, that was his reply, and I was so excited to go. I'm like, Dad, I've got to see. Then you get no bees. That's what he said, and I'm like, oh. whatever it was, he just wanted. That yeah, yeah, whatever it was. More. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. But that that maybe does push me now to yeah. like achieve something more, achieve something better than what I currently am, and what I am currently getting, I can do better. So, uh, but yeah, I, I took guidance from my dad when I left school. Um, he said you need to get a trade. They was his words, and I said. So what what does or did your dad do? What, what, what? So my dad is uh, an aerospace engineer. Yeah, so he works for Rolls Royce, um, yeah. building aircraft parts, which is a pretty pretty good job. Mm. Um, growing up, he didn't. He had a, a, a not as good of a engineering job, but it was still in engineering. Um, but it was only from when I was like sixteen and above. So because he was saying you go to the trades route because he didn't. Then I'm just trying to work that out. Yeah, like, potentially. Just... I just think that's the norm right mm. like that's the normal way of thinking like mm. normal people if they're giving advice to someone it won't be go set up your own business go make mm. net income go make passive income it's get a job work for someone and, mm. and, and for a lot of people like the trade route is a normal one if yeah. you're not highly educated and, and you can't go to university so i said what trades is there and he said oh well i, I recommend you'd be a, rec a plumber or an electrician so I said, and, and, then, and he said, but plumbers have always got their hands down toilets and electricians are always in the nice warm houses, you know, connecting up sockets and stuff. So I said, all right, I'll be an electrician. So yeah, I applied for some jobs, got an apprenticeship to mm. be an electrician. And uh, it was far from the truth. I wasn't in a nice warm house <laughs> connecting up sockets. You were in toilets. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was actually in London. I, I, was do, I used to do a lot of working away. Mm. Worked on Olympic Stadium for maybe four or five years. I was lodging down London Monday to Friday. Long days, work starting at seven in the morning and finishing at eight, half eight at night. Um, so yeah, that's what I've done as soon as I left. Did you, oh, wait, looking back, you like, are you glad you did that? Yeah, I learned a lot of life skills, um, a lot of social skills, um, and a lot of handy skills as well. Like I'm, I'm all right with tools and stuff, yeah. and I wasn't when I left school, because obviously I'd never been guided that way, but I'm actually glad I went down that route, if I'm yeah. honest with you. And look, if, if I could give my kids advice when they leave me school, I'd give them totally different advice. Yeah. But the only advice I was given was advice from someone who, didn't that, that's all that. he knew. Eh? Yeah, but they also didn't do that, did he? So no, that, he didn't that, do that, no. So I guess he was thinking, go and do something, which is a good thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably wish I did. Exactly, yeah. So he thought ever. it was a good yeah. route to go down. So yeah. now I know different, I would guide my children into doing something a little bit different, but I'm, I'm glad I went down that route. Yeah. And it's funny because I, it I never did that and i never wanted to do trade right um i don't know what I, I i can't even explain what it was i just didn't feel like i wanted to but everyone did do you mm. know what i mean it yeah, was weird yeah. maybe that's why i didn't because everyone was yeah i don't, I yeah. don't know 
Yeah, I, I just wasn't that person. Did you go university? No. Mate, no. I left, I didn't, I didn't have any GCSEs. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did you do? So when, so I, so I didn't have, I got kicked out of school bef when we was doing the GCSEs. Yeah. I then wasn't allowed to sit them and I had to sit them separately. So I obviously was a rebel and went, fuck it. I'm you not, was naughty I'm than me. Not, well, the, the thing is what we got into is, unfortunately we got into fighting. Yeah. There was the Indians and the, and the whites and it was constantly, yeah, the Bengalis, like, but it, 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 it wasn't even a racial thing. It was just the fact that they loved to fight us. We loved to fight them. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But be, because it got to such a bad point in our school, like rec on record, our three years that we were there was like the worst. It just got worse and worse. You know, when it starts to get bad, it then was every day. Mm. But every day I was going to school, going, who, who are we going to fight with? Today? Really? Yeah. But, but the police were on, on the campus and everything. It was that bad. So then I, I was, honestly, I, I was just, because I was so relentless and extreme, I would literally be fighting every single day or, you know, there, thereabouts. So, but then, but then um, yeah, then I wasn't allowed to sit my GCSEs. Then when I actually finally went in the army, I had to sit GCSEs. To even be in the army, so I'd pass the the selection part, but then I had to sit GCSEs. So then I was screwed then because I, I actually didn't have any. Wow. Um, and very short story for you, if you don't know, I then got somebody to. Um, so I, I I sat my exams, failed them, and then got somebody else to sit it for me because obviously everyone's got a bald head in the army. Yeah. He went in my idea. I paid, <laughs> paid him fifty quid and he sat my obviously. exam. Well, yeah, but he, otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got in the army. Well, what does that go? To? That, that goes to show you that <coughs> it's, relentless. It's well, just, yeah, relentless, yeah. but also it's. What they was making you do to get in the army was pointless, right? Because oh, right, you actually right, got right, in right, and you yeah. didn't actually yeah. need it. Um, yeah. And I yeah. feel like that's school altogether. Yeah, it's they, true. They true. give you like they give yeah. they don't give you life skills. They give you skills that you're never going to use. Yeah. And they don't teach you about the real world. They don't yeah. teach you about what you actually need to survive and thrive. Mm. The other thing about school, obviously, you know, now especially to got children of like school needs to be there. Yeah. So let's be honest. If it wasn't, the world would be insane. Yeah. But obviously, I don't agree with most of the things that they do. Like what you're saying there, it, it, it's you know to say that you need your CCs to to get X, Y, Z job. It doesn't. It does not matter. No. However, the fact that you know that you've done a Sparky course, yeah. so you're fully qualified on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like for me to think to do that, that overwhelms and stresses me out. The thought of doing the exam side of it, rather than you know the practical I mean? side. Yeah. Yeah, but the yeah, practical, yeah. I'd love it. I'd yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. So, so that do you know what I mean? so, so if I had a knuckle down more at school, I don't know the answer to this, but maybe I'd have then been more inclined to then sit down. I could not physically sit down. Well, I could, but I, when I did exams, I was just writing on the paper and fucking making shit up. Really? Yeah, and then trying to do things to get out of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then do you know what makes you, makes you laugh? And this is hilarious because it's something about when you like look into ADHD and stuff. So they say about people with ADHD, right? So you're sick exam, and you're, and you're obviously going through the exam. You don't finish the exam, so what does he do? I'll give you a bit longer. Mm. Do you know how fucking torturous that is? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the last I've, one already, you want. I've already counted every single screw in the building, <laughs> in, in the room, sorry. Do you know what I mean? I've, played, I've, I've fiddled around with yeah. all the screws under the table. I've counted all the fucking, do you know what I mean? I've, yeah. I've already explored this room to mm. as much as I can, then you can make me sit here for another 20 minutes yeah. and not do my paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> It's so, yeah. but, but, but they don't cater for each child. Like everyone's no. different, right? And everyone learns yeah. different. And I think the problem is, you take a test and they're like, "Oh, you failed. You're a failure." Yeah. And and that's not actually the case. No. Um, no. Yeah. It need it, it massively needs to change the school. But that's, system. that's where you know the most successful people have that relentless pursuit, don't they? Yeah. And that's something I believe that I have installed. Like it's like that. You know, all jokes aside, like that's not the way to get in the army, obviously. Yeah. But it was a way I got in yeah, because yeah. I was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. I am getting in and I'm doing what I can to and get in. And you've done there. whatever it took to, to get in there, yeah. right? Even if it meant cheating. Yeah, it's lit, right? <laughs> and it's like, it, yeah, you pass through. Yeah, but, it, but also you go through exams on your own. Yeah. And, and I think school teaches you to, that you have to do everything on your own. Mm. The most successful people in the world, well, near enough anyone who's making anything of themselves are not doing it on their own. They're actually building a team and outsourcing. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what you get told. You get told if you fail this exam, you're a failure. When yeah. you don't get, actually get team, uh, you get, don't get taught to build a team and outsource stuff and leverage other people's skills. Yeah. If you if don't you know how to do, do this, yourself, you're a failure. It's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's the opposite way exactly. around. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when we then move forward into, you know, you. Well, after your lecture at Spock, how yeah. long did you do that for? Oh, so I got the apprenticeship when I was uh, 17. Yeah. Um, and I was doing it up until 2018 I got into property. Yeah. So that was six years ago. So yeah. I would have been 25. So I was only doing it eight or nine years. I thought it was longer. 
eight or nine years I was so doing you, it. But you, but you stuck that out. So, so you self-employed doing that for that period of time? So I was uh, working for a big firm and um, I was working down London, lodging away, and I didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like working for someone. I didn't like being told what to do. I didn't yeah. like um, the way that they used to treat us and take money from us and leave us down London and say, no, vans are coming back. You've got to work the weekend. Yeah. Um, I hated that. So yeah. then I became self-employed and that's sort of like the next step in the quadrant, right? Mm. Rob Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant is yeah, yeah, employed, yeah. self-employed, business owner, investor. So then I moved into the self-employed and I realized that working for myself was a lot better than being employed. I've not mm. really got to answer to anyone. There's no re real limit on how much I can earn, although there is a little bit. Um, so then I went self-employed, ran Nottingham. And most people at that point would have been so happy with the situation that I was in, in terms of for an electrician to be plodding around Nottingham, doing tests really nice and easy, not getting dirty, getting paid good money in your own van, choosing your hours. Mm. Most electricians, that's their dream job. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, but I was still in that position where it was like, this is hell. I need more. Why did you feel that was hell? Because let, let's take that back to when you, hell was being let down by vans up, turn up, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. You know that, just for a moment to, to think about, that is a normal life for most. Yeah. Not most people, sorry, but, but, but a lot of people, that's still a normal life. Yeah. And they're just cracking on with it, yeah. aren't they? Because yeah. they've got no, they've either got no drive to be self-employed yeah. or they haven't got the balls, let's be honest. Yeah. Or, or, or they just, they, they think that's, that's, that's their cap. Yeah. And people, it, it just becomes normal. Yeah. And I think people forget what it is they actually want in life and they lose sight of it. Yeah. So they just float. Yeah. They just float through what they think they should be doing. Yeah. And that's turning up at a desk on site and just making money, uh, pay the bills. Um, yeah, security as well. Yeah, like security. The doing it on your own. Yeah, the pay, yeah. And, and people lose sight. And also, they haven't got the confidence to go and do something a little bit more, even if they wanted to. And they feel like they don't know how and they feel like it's a massive risk. Um, so yeah, that's why people stay in that situation. And, yeah. and for me, there was just always something inside of me which was like, I, I deserve more, mm. I need more, and I'm gonna mm. get more. And there was always that fir that burning flame where it was like, I'm gonna do something. Yeah, yeah. so you were unhappy there, moved on to doing it on your own, yep. but then you didn't like that because? Because again, there was, a, uh, there was a ceiling on what I could earn. There was a ceiling on my, um, my freedom, time freedom. So time freedom to me is more important than financial freedom in terms mm -hmm. of like, financial freedom does bring the time freedom. So I just wanted my time back. I wanted to live life on, on my own terms. Um, and I'll be honest, I just, I like nice things. Mm -hmm. I like the nice life. And when I see other people are doing this, I'm like, why can't I? Mm. Like they've like people want to drive past in a Ferrari and, and Lamborghini and, and a lot of people, normal people would hate. And yeah, and when I when when I see one, I'm like, I hope that's a young person. And when I see him, I'm like, love that. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I look at him and I don't get any hate or jealousy or envy, which a lot of people do. I'm actually it inspires me. And I'm like, if he can do that, why am I not? Yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. different from him to me. Yeah. What car would you get? Oh man. I'll get a Lamborghini uh, Huracan. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exact, I'm literally, oh, mate, I swear to God, exactly the same. The soft top one. I don't know why, right, but I've always hooked on to a Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah, same. I don't know, if you gave me a Ferrari, I'd be pretty happy with Not it. Not a lot of Ferraris you know, as well. I mean, if you yeah. bought the Ferrari, yeah, yeah. it's for the show. I mean, show, I mean it's fine. <laughs> you stick that coin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But I, I like them, yeah. but Lamborghini is just a whole new level of sex. Yeah, and I feel like it's because it's a symbol of wealth. Yeah. Growing up, Lamborghini, yeah. rich man, Lamborghini. Um, yeah. But here's the thing, like, when you do what we do and we're always striving for more, a lot of people are afraid to admit that they want the luxury things because yeah. it may make them look shallow yeah. to other people. Materialistic. And materialistic, yeah. yeah. And I'm not afraid to admit it. I like watches. I like cars. I want a nice house. Mm. I want to travel the world as much as I can with whoever I want for however I want to, however long I want to. Um, and I'm not afraid to admit that. Whereas mm. I know a lot of people when I ask them and they say, oh, I want to give loads to charity. And mm. listen, I want to as well, but like, that's not at the forefront of my mind. But yeah. a lot of people, they, they, are, they are afraid to admit that they want the nice things in yeah. life. I've never been afraid to admit it. Yeah, I want no, to that's that. good to hear you say it like that. Yeah. Because well, you're just being true to yourself. Absolutely, yeah. It's, I think as well, sometimes we're pressured to think a certain way. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I used to struggle with, so I'm a very materialistic person. Yeah. Right? I'll admit it, yeah. I am materialistic. Yeah. 
feel like I've said this the other week, but Sarah, Sarah makes me over so often wear like Primark tops and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's not saying that anyone that wears Primark tops is not yeah. cool or the cut, but I started doing them for, for my men, for mentally, for myself to be like, I look, I look nice in this top. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely, I love that. I, I always feel like it's something that came from when I was young because I, I, I didn't have it, I couldn't afford it, my parents couldn't, do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, I yeah. couldn't afford to throw money at things like that. Yeah. So I always seek to want it. Yeah. And now I can afford it, I always then want that and only that. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So then yeah. everything becomes, but it, it, it did make me a little bit materialistic, not in, not in a bad negative way, but it made me think that I only want, do you know what I mean, nice materials. Yeah. And it's good to ground yourself and remind yourself of like yeah. where you come from and not feel like what you own is who you are because mm. that's not true no of course you know no, what i mean no. and, and, and i'm the same like i wear primark tops and, and stuff like that and i i, I, I don't mind it yeah. I, I uh i like nice clothes I, I i buy some quite expensive clothes but i never like to be too flashy with it and i still just wear i could yeah, wear normal things as well. Mm. Just it's when you know you're doing it for yourself, and that so, so it took me a while. It genuinely took me a while to get over that whole. So I used to be like, I am, I'm, I'm really materialistic. And I was yeah. like, hold on, I'm not. I like materials. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. And then, then that's where then I got that. You know, I, I started to understand that because I used to think that I only wanted material stuff for other people, but that's because of what people say about people that wear stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That, right. So then I judged myself with that. Yeah. When actually, I grounded myself to be like, hold on, no, it's not. It's just because I never had the money to have it, so yeah. now I want it. Yeah. And you know, I'm not. I'm wearing it for me, not for them. Do, do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, a, I get that. I guess it, as well, like in business and success, you know, there's different ways to look at what success is. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, success means nothing. Mm. It really means zero. Yeah. Unless you put something on it. Yep. because it's what you see as success right? different for everyone yeah um but that's where like i think when we look at things like this it's amazing to have these goals it's amazing to have these thoughts and stuff yep but at the same time you need to make sure that you're taking the, the steps don't you rather than you know trying to just jump for that big fucking goal it's like you want to be building a business you, know, you don't want to you don't want to get that flashy car the second you can get the car yeah delayed gratification right and yeah i always say this to ray and she says justin piss off i say ray if i won the lottery tomorrow i would not want it because i'm yeah. missing out on the journey which is going to get i'm going to get there anyway it's that hunger isn't it's that it? hunger yeah, right? i'm with you the, the problem that people have and when i say the problem people have it applies to me as well and this is why i know it happens with other people we we set a goal we attach happiness to it yeah yeah so when i get to i don't know 10k a month in, in passive income then i'm going to be happy yeah right trust me it doesn't happen. That doesn't mean no, you happen. Yeah, I get that, it, that does not mean. And, and in fact, when I think like how stressed and stuff we get at the minute with property, but when I look back and think when I had little and I was just starting out, that was more exciting. I was probably more yeah. happier then. So yeah. you can't attach happiness to a goal because you get to that goal and it's like, what's the next thing? Yeah. The next thing is twenty k a month. Okay, I'll be happy when I get that. Or uh, I want a Lamborghini. I'll be happy when I get that. That does not bring happiness. And yeah. when you attach happiness to a goal, that's when you're unhappy forever. No, of course, because you're, you're and I love what you're saying there, but, but it's because you're constantly searching for that feeling that yeah. you think is there, yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah, you've got to dig deep. If, you, if you're searching for that feeling of, feeling of being happy, you've got to dig deeper and you've got to really look into mm. your soul and be like, why am I unhappy now? Mm. Am I ungrateful for what I've got? Like, why mm. am I feeling like I desperately need happiness? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, true. Yeah. So, I, I know someone that earns a million pound a month. Yeah. Right? Don't get me wrong, he's not unhappy. But, he, but he, the things that he says that comes with his stress, I'm like, wow, mm. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my goal isn't to hit a million pound a month anyway. Yeah. But do you know what I'm saying? I mean, but when you when you think about it, like, people, like you say, attach their, their, their feelings to something yeah. that's an object, yeah. but when you get to the object, moving the, feeling, object. the feeling's not there. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like chasing yeah. a car, right? Which is uh, never going to run out of petrol. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you keep running. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you, like, obviously moving forward into where you are now then. Yeah. So why did you start property? What, what was the... <sighs> so I've never really said this, but like, I've always had a, um, what's the word? A, a not, the word's not silent, a, a mentor who never knew he was a mentor and he didn't even know me. And I didn't even really know him. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. when I went to school, there was someone in our school whose dad was 
coin in it. It was very welfare. Mm. Um, his daughter always had nice clothes and he always had nice cars. He had a lot of houses. It looked like he was living the dream life. Now, I was 15, 16, and he was a landlord. And he bought a lot of houses and he was always mm. on YouTube being an idiot. And he is an idiot, right? But I know him now. I didn't know him then. But yeah. since like I've started getting into property, property myself, I've talked to him a lot more. Um, so he's always been like a mentor in the background that never knew. He just existed. Yeah, but, so it was really like an inspiration. Yeah, yeah, that's just an inspiration. To him. Yeah, Maybe yeah. mentor's not the right word, but... No, no, I, but I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. he, he doesn't know he's doing it, but... He, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And uh, so... We'll call it a silent mentor. Silent mentor, yeah. We'll, we'll trade yeah, 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 I like that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, i just seen what he was doing, right? And from then, I, from like, very young, I was like, that's the lifestyle I want. Mm. I can see the vehicle which has got him there. It's proper to, Yeah. And that's why I chose that, I think, because I could see what it could bring. Uh, yeah. I knew it could bring uh, passive income which to me is the goal and not earned income um i've rob i've r read rob kiyosaki's rich dad poor dad which is where a lot of people started out and mm. he mentioned real estate a lot in there as well as building businesses and and other asset classes so yeah from there it was how do i get into it yeah how do what I age was that when you started feeling like that and getting hungry for that stuff i would say 24 23 24 25 um yeah so i was still obviously working at the time but I was always looking for ways out and always mm. thinking of how am I going to make money? Um, there's got to be something. How do I catch a lucky break? Do I set up a business? Do I um, start investing? So yeah, I, I was quite young. And then I think it was around 20, when we was 26, we, 25, 26 is when we really went for it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you came out of your job to go into it or? No. So I can remember the moment it got brought up with me and my wife, right? Because she was a maths teacher, comfortable mm. job. Um, she didn't, she says she didn't mind it. She says this now, but at the time she used to come back from work and say, oh, I've fucking had enough of that hell hold. And now she's like, I didn't mind it too much. I'm like, you used to call it hell. Yeah. yeah? And so. If only I had a recording. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I can remember the moment um, we were sat at a, a car wash and Ray had, her dad uh, got quite ill. Um, he's got Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. and he had to have a major operation on his brain and he's very young so he's in his 50s so to get mm -hmm. diagnosed with something like that at that age is quite tough yeah, yeah quite tough and quite rare and it was hard on ray and she said to a uh, school at the time i need some time off work and it was like yeah no worries she was like i need to see my dad in hospital and and they was like yeah no worries you can have two hours off work on, on friday afternoon yeah so Bri was like man so i can remember we sat at this car wash and i said to ray um, on a Sunday evening, you know, Sunday motivation's high, right? Mm. Friday motivation's low, everyone's like, oh, the weekend's here, my job's yeah. not too bad anyway, yeah. you get to Sunday, oh, fuck, work's tomorrow. So yeah, motivation was really high, sat in this car wash, and, and I said to Ray, look, I've got this guy on my Facebook, he's really young, he drives a really nice car, and he does this thing, he's in property, and he does this thing called rent to rent which is where you rent a, a house off a landlord and then rent out the rooms yourself and make profit, where you don't actually have to put in much money yourself. So I had to bring her on board in terms of like, talk her into wanting to doing this because it was out of the norm mm. and yeah we found from there it was just like we just put in the work from there we we found a course in london where she could attend and we had three grand in savings and we couldn't afford to for us both to go on the course mm. so ray's more clever than me so we sent ray down there and it was a last of our savings like last chance saloon right yeah um and she went down there and Never really looked back, to be honest. Yeah, yeah from there, everything just... It sounds, good, uh, it sounds a good mix, though. Sparky and a maths teacher. Well, you say this, right? She, she knows the sums and figures. No, 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 no. So that's what I would have thought, yeah? <laughs> Was it two times two and two plus two? <laughs> kids, kids she, stuff. Ray has never, ever done any maths, done any figuring out numbers, spreadsheets on any of our deals, yeah. anything whatsoever. So it's always me doing it. And I only got a C in maths. Right, yeah. and and she was qualified maths teacher, so she was really clever in it. But I think it's because she come out of that environment. She didn't want to re go into the numbers yeah. and, and maybe yeah. do all that. So I just had to yeah. learn it and picked it up. And now I really enjoy it. So I'm glad I actually took that role on. But as well, you obviously have that mentality of I want more, and because your life clearly shows that you kept wanting more, 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 more. Yeah. When that moment come, if you didn't run with it, oh me. Do you know what I mean? What was all this about? We grasped it with two hands because I just knew this was the opportunity. And mm. quickly off that course, we took a massive risk and took on two properties at the same time. Looking back now, there was bad deals that we took on, but we needed to, to do that to grow from them. Yeah, learn, yeah. gain experience. 
And if we wouldn't have done them, God knows who we would, where we would have been, right? Because it's just what we had to go through at the time. And mm. we learned a lot just by taking that bit of risk. And mm. we had to learn to take risks because everything in, in property and business in general can be a risk and you've got to take risks to grow. So we're not scared of taking risks and we've shown that really early on, which which helped us out. Yeah. So, so when you did the, the rent to rent stuff then, yeah. it was, well, when you did the course, was it only rent to rent stuff? Yeah, at yeah. the time, yeah. Because that was that method. Yeah. That was that, yeah. The, the, me, the, the, the strategy rent to rent is sold to people who haven't really got much experience or knowledge in property. It's a very yeah. low... Um, you say it's an entry level as It's such. an entry level, very low yeah. entry level. And not many people succeed. So if you go to a property training course, people are paying like two or three grand to get on there. And they're all like normal people who just want to do what me and Ray step did. Just get out of the job, yeah. Step, yeah. step foot in something else. Um, I'll say one or two people, percent of people actually succeed in, in that kind of environment. Mm. Um, because it is really low entry and because you're not too financially committed, people aren't then too driven to make that money back, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's not like they're 10 or 20,000 pounds into something. Yeah. It's a couple of grand they're financially committed to. So they're not hold too accountable to a high amount of money to, to make it. But And also, if I'm right to say, I'm sure you can walk out and run off at any point, can't you? Like it's not, you're not necessarily, uh, do you know what I mean? Because you don't uh, own things. Yeah. You can just be, I'm done, can't you? You can do, yeah. I mean, there's you, there's contracts and stuff you have to sign, but you do it in a limited company. You can shut that down and you can very easily come away. I know people who have done it. I know people who have gone into rent to rent, got a few properties, find it really hard, really difficult. I mean, read it at the start and then they give up. Mm. And it, I hate seeing that because I'm like, you've got so much potential mm. that you're leaving on the table because time's got tough. Now, it's going to be even tougher going back to what you what you're currently doing because you, yeah. you tried to escape that and now you're just going to settle for it. So I really don't like it when I see people make a start, mm. get a bit of success, get a bit of traction and then give up. I, I really don't like but that. Let's be honest, that, that, is, that is life, right? Because yeah. there's, everybody has a threshold, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And it's, it's your programmed threshold. I like to look at it because it's what you're used to knowing that that's your ceiling. Yeah. You know, there's a very, very good analogy I can't, or, or theory. I can't remember the exact what it is, but imagine a, a, a grasshopper in a, in a kit in a little box, Yep. you know, and he keeps jumping and he's jumping and hitting his head. So he's like, I'm not going to jump again because I'm going to hit my head. So he just jumps lower. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. you put him in the outside world and he's like, fucking hell, look how high he's jumping. And all of a sudden he slowly starts jumping. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. It, 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 you, everyone has their threshold but actually some people as well and you have to admit some people go back to their normal life because actually they go that's not for me but there's a there's a fine line isn't there between pushing through that uncomfortable bit yeah and and you know realizing if it is or isn't for you you could still argue it is for everybody but then that depends how much they suffer back at where they were yeah i think it isn't for me is a get out clause in my opinion mm. because what's not for you is it the strategy okay fine or what's not for you hitting your goals is that not for you achieving mm. more achieving what you actually want is that not for you freedom time freedom emotional mm. freedom financial freedom is that not for you if that's not the case then go back to what you're doing that was fine yeah. but if the strategy is not for you okay perfect you then can you change go it. back to the drawing board yeah what is for me what vehicle am i going to yeah. use to get me to my goals because it's not got to be property all the time and I've done a bit of like stock trading and, and crypto and stuff like that. I realized that wasn't for me, right? Mm. But what I did know was for me was hitting my goals. So I just knew I had to find something that was going to get me there, right? And I yeah. did just go back into the system and, and give up on, on what I wanted, mm. which is what I, we so that's, a lot that's of people where that powerful part about success comes in, isn't it? Yeah. Because let's be honest, success is, it's a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's yeah. not an object, it's a feeling. Yeah. So actually to feel like this is successful, to feel like X, Y, Z, whereas if, so that's why some people just they love, just love making money yeah because their success is making money yeah do you know so, yeah so actually they, they go different things it's like, like i couldn't come out of uh of well i say i couldn't come out of the fitness industry i have to be connected to the fitness industry in some way shape or form yeah because as soft as it sounds it saved my life if yeah you know it stopped me taking drugs or going to prison is yeah. the way i look at it because yeah. i become obsessed with wanting to be a better athlete yeah um so so i have that connection with the fitness industry that i'll always be in it and that's my passion but I'm actually, so I'm the opposite to what I'm saying there. So I can't go and make money elsewhere because I don't find it, I don't find it um, motivating. Just, just see what I'm saying? My, my, my passion is in that whole change in life yeah. and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whereas so some people can go, do you know what I'm trying to say? Some people can make money anywhere, can't they? Yeah. 
Yeah, but with what you're in, if you're passionate about that already, then I suppose for you, you've you've got to stay in there if it makes you happy and you're passionate about it. Yeah. You've just got to find the best way to monetize, monetize it uh, as much as possible. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I agree. I just want to stop you again for a split second. Now, you've probably heard me talk about my mind next quite a lot. If you or somebody that often goes through life procrastinating and not really understanding what to do next, you have these big goals, big visions, but then you all of a sudden lose your energy and not know where to turn next. Line Mind X is here to help you plan the shit out of your next 90 days. And that is as simple as it is. We work on your next 90 days, nothing else. And that's why it is so potent and powerful. We make sure that whatever you commit to in that 90 days happens and we really drive everything forward. We count back from the 90 days. We work out your months, weeks, your days, and even down to the things you do in the day to make sure that you are doing what you said you were gonna do, and you are electrifying everything that happens throughout that period and you're crushing your goals. So if you wanna learn more about Line Mind X, jump on the freebie that's in the link below and you will be able to learn a little bit understanding of exactly what we're about and then you can take it to the next step if you want to. Speak to you soon. So with where you are now yeah. in life, yeah. um, you're, you're obviously, you've got you know a lot of properties. You, you, have you still got any rent friends? I think you've... So we still have a rent to rent portfolio, which is managed by our virtual assistant in the Philippines cool. and she makes it totally hands off. So we have no very minimum time input into that business now. Yeah, which and that makes money. Passive yeah, makes income. passive income and it just makes sense for us to, to hold them and um, continue to make it as hands off as possible while bringing us in money while we're focusing on, on other, other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I guess because you put so much effort and hard work into that, it would be stupid to get rid of it in a sense, but then... Yeah, I mean... With the money it makes, it is stupid to give it back. And especially with no time input from myself. We did have the, the choice at one point to sell that business. Mm. Um, but just for what we could have got for it, it just made sense for us to hold on to it. Um, so it serves its purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then your main focus, obviously, well, I say main, you've got your properties, but then you've also got your coaching. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say is your, your, your majority of the focus now? Surely it's the coaching because of the, what's needed, right? Yeah, I mean, building our own property portfolio has become pretty hands-off. So the time input needed for actually investing in property is minimum. You don't mm. need too much. And I feel like people think you need a lot of time for it when you actually don't. We find it easy to find deals, take them through conveyancing, manage the builds, refinance them. Um, pretty hands-off on... Uh, raising funds, finding investors, because we're really like active on social media. So yeah, I would say probably 40% of our time is now put towards building our own portfolio and 60% is, is mentoring and helping people do the same. Yeah. So how many, yeah. ha, what, what should, where's your property at now? Like you, you, you're talking millions, don't you? What, what is it? Yeah. So we've got over 20 HMOs, which yeah. is uh, a portfolio worth seven, over 7 million. Um, nice. We've got a few currently going through the sales process at the minute, so that will take us to um, over 8 million. Mm. Uh, but this year we'll probably buy another 10 to 15 HMOs. Um, we've done like other types of acquisitions, so we've done commercial to residential, we've built out like a block of six flats, we've acquired a hotel, um, mm. and uh, yeah, we've done other strategies as well, so it's so not just HMOs. Now? Yeah. Has that, been, has that been a while? Uh, yeah, we had that since 2021. Oh, nice. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've had that since 2021. We had the owner approach us because he refurbed uh, the hotel during lockdown. And uh, lockdown came before lockdown, and then lockdown came and he couldn't rent it out. So he, he rang us and said, I need help. Do you want in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need <laughs> yeah. help, basically. So yeah. uh, we partnered up with uh, a very smart a business partner of ours who also became our mentor and he's the one who gifted us silver coin so that's why you've got one today yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah he structured it very cleverly in a way where we could um, acquire this this hotel for not a lot of money done and it's uh, probably been one of our best investments so far yeah yeah and, and, and are you you're not as hands-on with that surely if it's a bit more of a split or are you the hotel yeah um no so all of our assets are hands-off so yeah. um the hands off to the point of when when they're built out. So when we find them, they're pretty hands on, and then we we take them through the legals and, and architects and stuff like that. That's just basically a couple of emails, like instructing people, and then we go through the build and we make that really hands off because we get a full build team in who like builds it out, gives us updates, and makes that hands off. We then refinance and hand it over to a letting agent. Mm. So 
once we hand it over to a letting agent, it's just a case of us then dealing with the letting agent when, when problems come up and they make it as hands-off as possible. But like the hotel, we've made that super hands-off. We've actually uh, leased it out to a company who leases it from us for three years. They just give us guaranteed rent every every month and they run it as a hotel. Nice. And whatever profit they make, they pay us our rent and then anything on top is, is what they've what is left in for them. So yeah. basically like rent to rent. So we used yeah. to take on rent to rent and now yeah. we're giving out our properties to like yeah. rent to rent providers. So like the, the roles have sort of reversed a little bit and I can see the power in, in making yeah, it hands off. Yeah. But as well, you're, you've got the holding ground, haven't you? Absolutely. So, so actually it's like, you're, yeah, it's a smart they, way of doing it. You're, you're guaranteed your money, aren't you? We're guaranteed the money. Let's be honest, even if they move, like, you know, end of term, they moved out, you, you jump in and carry it on, don't you? I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But we'll, we'll all, always make it hands off for us. No matter yeah. if they left, we'll find another provider, we may convert it into like a block of flats or a massive HMO. Um, whatever it is, we'll, we'll, we'll make it hands off. That's mm. our strategy. Yeah, love it. Yeah. And then on your coaching side of things, yeah. and obviously, you know, plug away by all means, who do you work with and what do you do? So I work with. People who want to convert HMOs. So this could be people who were in rent to rent, like what me and Ray was, and they're looking to take the next step of actually owning them and buying them. Um, or just anyone who's got buy to lets, anyone who's already in property, they've got maybe a little bit of knowledge around property, um, and then they want to start buying normal houses and, and converting them into HMOs. So I take them through the whole process. I've set up a, an online training portal where they go on and teach themselves in their own time. And I jump on mentorship calls and hold them accountable to taking actions. And uh, we do due diligence together on areas. We look for houses together. We run the numbers. And then I sort of like handhold the um, handhold them through the process um, mm. into building a HMO portfolio like me and Ray. Because there's, the roadmap I have with my mentees is I want them to have four HMOs within the first year. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got kind of got to unlock the belief in them that they can do that. I have a lot yeah. of mentees come to me and say, Justin, I just want one this year. Yeah. 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 Obviously, because I've been through that with the same stuff, it is insane to say that, isn't it? Massively. It really is. You know Massively. What? I get it. I get why they're saying that. Yeah, yeah, you, You've never had a house before. Yeah, why yeah. do you want four? Yeah. Like, Jesus, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah, but, but actually, I'm, I don't want to talk for you, but that whole cut and paste, once you've got it right, you crack on, don't you? Massively. Yeah, and it's a cookie cutter. So, yeah. like, it's the same with everything. Once you've done it once, you can then repeat it. Mm. Other problems come up when you're scaling, and that's what we're there for, because yeah. like, we've scaled and we know the problems that you're going to come up against. But yeah, I have people approaching us and saying, Justin, I just want to pay you to get me one HMO conversion. And I say, uh, I'll be honest, like... I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah, I don't... <laughs> and I say this to them, I say, look, I, I don't want to sound horrible here, but I want to be around the fucking best people, yeah? yeah? Now, you can achieve so much more. Now, yeah. my roadmap is four in a year. Now, if you want to come on that journey, I can I can take you through it, right? And I can be with you every step of the way and make sure you get there. But if you just want one, I'm, I'm the wrong person to go to because... Yeah the community I've set up is it's just people scaling and yeah. at a quick pace and I see day to day basis that everyone are creating freedom and very early on I find out what money what the money is going to mean to them Yeah, a lot of them it's I don't know have more time off so they can turn up to the children's pick children up from school take yeah. them on, on, on holidays which they've not been able to for years so when I see them when I see it unfolding I mm -hmm. know what's on the other side of it right because mm -hmm. like I know what money's done for us so when I see it's starting to do things to them that's my passion. That's yeah. what I absolutely love. I yeah. love that. Yeah. The thing is, it, light, it lights me up you saying that because that's the stuff I love to do with with, with all of our guys, right? Because because quite simply, if you when you haven't got something and you don't know what having that looks or feels like, yeah, you have a very vague explanation of what that is. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of feelings and emotions that come with it. Like, let's just say you look at someone with a Ferrari again. No, let's go Lamborghini. Ferrari shit. So, <laughs> let's go, so you look, yeah, as an example, you look at someone with a, with a Lamborghini. You're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's it. But the, but the thing is, unless you've actually thought that you're sitting in that car, visioned it, felt it, smelt it, do you know what I mean? And, and actually, really gone, fuck this. Is, you don't know what that feels like. And that's what I love to do. What you're saying there is because when you get people to to vision everything, it it, it starts to come true. They start to then really understand if they want that. That that feeling, yeah, want me. I one hundred percent agree, and I fucking love talking about this because it's so true. But like, yeah, that feeling that you get once you've got what it is you want. Let's say the Lamborghini, for example. Mm. You can fast track that by feeling it now. Now that's yeah. very hard to do. Yeah, I used to yeah. sit in. I used when I was plodding around Nottingham in my work van, like self employed. I used to drive my, my work van, and my wife used to call it the bogeymobile. 
Because she said I used to pick my nose and flick the bogeys around the van, which is not true. Right? I just want to say that. I, got, I don't know what there was, but there wasn't bogeys. Um, and I used to pretend I was in like, in like a Ferrari or something, and I used to really visualise it, and it used to make me so happy. Yeah. Like, and, and I've known people to like print off the Lamborghini bikes and put it yeah, on the yeah. steering wheel and stuff. And but like, you've got to really get into that feeling of what it's yeah. like, and. That's how you fast track getting yeah. that. It's funny because it reminds me of the time, right? That Sarah, uh, I, I took Sarah to before we could afford a, a, a Range Rover. Yeah, she took her to the Range Rover garage a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, she actually just laugh at me, but then she started to click. She, yeah. The thing is, that Sarah didn't grow up like with that sort of mentality. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. She, Obviously, she's in, in the corporate world before and stuff like that, and the dad took, brought her to, to be very safe and secure. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But with me, because I had nothing, I had, and I've just got an extreme personality and brain i just went extreme yeah but i used to go there and like and go and pretend i'm buying it and stuff yeah yeah and obviously the guy's like you know yeah so what do you earn and i just fucking make shit up yeah you know, you know <laughs> yeah. just to be like I'm just yeah feet i'm just absorbing this moment and do you, do you know what i mean it, yeah it, that's uh known as prosperity training right right where, where, where you're thinking about being that that in that position yeah but as well what what really helps me carry over and this is where i've like been huge in the strongman side is visioning that you've done it before you've done it yeah you know um, we can put this in anything in life um but you know that whole like you know before a strongman competition i used to literally you know shut my eyes think about things speak to people smell the room do you know mm. what i'm saying yeah, yeah the more you can feel something the more it becomes true and you and you feel like you've already walked down that street before every time every time you've got a think it's already happened and yeah. i've done the same with range rover um we went and, and had a look what we wanted before we could afford it we've done the same with, in, in a house um not far from where we live and it's like one of the best houses in the area i went and viewed it and mm. i think the person who was showing us it was just me on my own in fact i went with a friend i think the person who was showing us around looked at us thinking he's can't afford this house <laughs> and they was asking us like like uh, uh, what we do and stuff like yeah. this and we did say we're property investors so we didn't lie we just maybe we lied about how much we earn yeah uh, <laughs> what where, where, where about are you on the yeah journey? yeah but but like when we was in that position we uh, i took pictures and a picture of my car on the drive and then i stood in the top bedroom and took a picture of my car on the drive and then i got home out of that house out of that house yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then i got home and uh printed it out and put it on my vision board I told everyone you moved <laughs> yeah but it's like just, it. now it's really visual in front of everything yeah. that i do and yeah, you, you have got to write and act like it's already happened. And I do it every morning. Yeah. Like I've, I've got a, a pile of books like that. And every morning I'll write my 20, 10, 5, 1 quarter goals. And I write them in a way that it's already happened. I am already yeah. this person. Yeah, you're um, living it. I'm, I'm living it, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I agree with what you say about the emotions. You've got to bring that into it. And, and that comes with five senses. What can you see? What can you hear? What can you smell? Do you know what I mean? Christmas Day, yeah. I'm, I'm waking up and I've got all of my family around me because I live in this nice big house. I can smell Ray's shit cooking, um, burning yeah. the Yorkshire puddings. You're not getting any <laughs> Christmas dinner now. <laughs> no, but yeah, I totally agree yeah, with what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, it's, it's funny because uh, just, just to throw my two pence in there. So, you know, you think about obviously your, your what did you say, 5, 3, 1? Ten, uh, 20, 10, 5, 1 quarter. Yeah, I lost complete track of that. Right. All I care about is one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, now, this is, my, this is my thought. I'm not, I'm not saying you... you so, so... Because I've got such a uh, sporadic brain, right? And, yeah. I'm, and I'm very much, I'll change shit all the time. And I, I, I'm a massive fan of, I hate to go anywhere beyond that. Yep. Simply because I can't see it or feel, I, I just can't connect with it. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that I won't actually think that far. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So actually I go, I go one year and then I do obviously the four quarters. Yeah. That down to the, down to the month, the week, the day. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of my mentees are the same. I know so many people, so Sam Riano, for example, who yeah. started Sam and, and Freedom Warriors. Yeah. Um, he He's the same. He's massive on goal writing and goal setting. But again, some people can't just see past a certain time period. I don't know why I can. I get really yeah. excited because I write down like, I don't know, 20 years, I'm 51 years old. This is the person, yeah. this is what I look like. It's and I can really I've, see I've it. tried it a lot of times. Yeah. I, just, I just can't, but, I, it's, it's weird, I can't connect with and, it. And I, I struggle when it's a shorter time frames because I'm like, I've got to write about an experience now. What is going to change dramatically in the next year that mm. I can write about, which is really going to make me happy and really get me connected to it. Yeah. So my life is going to change, but not to the point where it's like, shit, this is exciting. Whereas in, yeah. 20, whereas in 20 years, when I'm on a jet, like, yeah, 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 that's when it's like, yes, this is what I can connect to. Justin Ewey's, that's what's coming out. <laughs> no, I love it, yeah. So so what is next for, for, for you guys then? Obviously, I know you've got so much going off and you're still, let's be honest, 
you're far into your journey, but you're still, still at the start. Yeah, yeah. You, we're, you've got so much to come. We're scratching the surface with what yeah, we're so currently what, achieving. What is next? Where are you going? What are you doing? Um, so, a lot of focus on our own portfolio. Um, the past few years, we've kind of had a few distractions, especially when it comes to the rent, rent to rent and stuff. Um, the next goal, we've got a, a certain net cash flow we want per month goal, mm. um, which I believe we can achieve within the next three years. Mm. Um, we sort of set ourselves a goal of how many HMOs we want, which is, well, when I say we, it's more me than Ray. Um, and that's probably a bit of an ego thing, if I'm honest. So I want 50 HMOs within the next two years. Yeah. What have you got now, sorry? Uh, just over 20. So yeah. it would be 15 per year. Yeah. And we're on track to do that this year. So the first quarter, we've had three accepted. Um, so I, I, I think... 50 in the next two 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 to three years is, is easily doable um so yeah that's that's the next goal in terms of what a portfolio looks like and maybe do some big um different types of assets not types of assets yeah types of assets in property so mm. like um maybe blocks of flats and the the, the assets which are more for the long-term wealth yeah um, so they yeah. may not produce as much income per month but in the next 20 25 years they're going to go up a lot in value um but also in the, in the same time frame help as many people as possible yeah. and bring as many people on board to to create as much freedom as possible and just evolve as a mentor and evolve in the way that i teach people and get people to their goals in a in a shorter time frame than what they're currently doing mm. so that's what's next for us and we're currently building our own house so mm. um nearly finished we we'll, should be in there by may um and that's the next exciting bit, right? Because that inspires me. Where I currently wake up and live, it used to inspire me when I first moved there, but the house I'm going to wake up in is like, like I said, I'm come from a council estate, right? So this is just, it's a really nice house. I'm like a real, one of the best, mm. I would say one of the best areas in Nottingham. So that inspires me. Yeah. And it's proud. You're proud, yeah, aren't you? I'll, like, I'll be like, proud. Uh, yeah. You've, you've not made it because that's not a thing, is it? But I've, I've leveled up. I've, I've got to somewhere that... Yeah, progressed. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and got to somewhere that probably most people thought as a kid i could never get to yeah so um that and that that, that will be the house that we have uh, a family in and yeah. they'll be the house we have kids in so that's uh that's yeah, the next that's big, a big, big yeah big house, yeah massive right? yeah how many, how many rooms is there there's four there's four right. rooms yeah but we're only having one well, maybe two kids uh, well you never know you never know where it's gonna go you say that you have six deep and you're like, oh my god when do we stop <laughs> four dogs eight goldfish <laughs> all these things but mate today has been insane uh thanks for sharing thank we've you got, for we've, having got, me. Uh, we've got a, a you know good banter anyway yeah so yeah yeah i tried to i tried to be a bit serious as yeah. well as you know yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to just uh spit yeah. feathers for the whole thing but no mate i really appreciate everything and, and you know i know loads of people have benefited from your story um and i just want to say your 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 inspiration thank you it's very uh you know, our stories are very similar. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, uh, but I love, I just love to meet people like you. So I love to know that there's fucking grinders and hustlers out yeah, there, yeah. you know, and you have that relentless sort of like drive to, to be, but I'm proud of you, man. It's, uh, thank you, bro. it's a pleasure to be friends Same to you. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. I've, I've, I've actually really enjoyed it. And I like that you give someone, a, give people a, this type of platform to inspire others because I listen to podcasts all the time and, mm like that it gives me that drive so hopefully yeah, yeah, someone yeah. who's listened to this sure, today it's, it's mad because every single week we get i get get messages off people and 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 i you know what i call them ghost followers mm. yeah so a little bit like what you said actually with that your mentor that your that your secret mentor yeah, yeah. he didn't know you yeah do you know what I mean? it's a bit like that you know when people follow you yeah. they're getting so much value from it but you just don't know because they don't tell you every so often right then they'll message me some ridiculously long thing seeing how much you've opened and how yeah how mate and it's like wow I and that's what you're doing shit. it for right you know I mean? yeah yeah and that's that thing is it where like that's why i keep doing it because you know the, you don't know who you're helping sometimes absolutely and actually you know uh, uh, a long time ago i had a message that i'll never forget and i've said it before someone that said i helped them get through cancer wow i don't even know this guy really do you know what i'm saying and yeah he, he was just saying that because of my videos he just listens to them all the time but you know what shit like that is just crazy isn't it but what's more powerful than that is think of the ripple effect yeah so yeah, think yeah. of how many people that he's now helping potentially yeah, yeah of course yeah um, yeah so like just by doing this the ripple effect is is is, is insane and that's why yeah. i love coming on here and and telling my story and speaking to people like you man you inspire me as well and especially with like coming from where you've come from to what mm. you're doing now i love it so keep it on yeah big love yeah where can people find you 
Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, yeah. yeah. So Facebook, Justin uh, Ingray, and on Instagram, it's Justin underscore Ingray underscore Property. Yeah. Um, and I also want to say while we're here is my wife will kill me if I don't say this right, but she's trying to like get her following up on on social media yeah. on, on Instagram because she's like documenting our home journey. Yeah. So I follow, I follow the reviews. Oh yeah, perfect. I, lo- I love that. I love that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can follow her as well on Instagram, which is uh, Yvonne House. Yeah. And uh, yeah, see you there. Yeah. I did. I did. I, her, I'd probably say her post is more interesting than yours. <laughs> if I'm honest. Right? No, I strongly know. disagree. I strongly disagree. My social media game is strong. Yeah, everyone follow her. Just so yeah, yeah. Everyone follow her. Yeah. But so. no, appreciate it, man. Nice one, bro. Much. Thank you. Thanks love for having it. me. Love it.